mess it down if you can. My God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Woo. Jesus. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Lord, we honor you. Oh, God. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for ordering your musicians, your songs, your singers, God, to go before us tonight to usher in your presence. Because, Lord God, truly these are just meetings that you don't meet right here with us. So we just want to thank you, Lord God, for the work that you're doing in our hearts even now, God. That you're changing things around. That you're going in and turning it upside down you, for your glory. For your glory. So we will give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, I want to thank you for every life that is in this place right now. Lord, I dedicate every soul to your kingdom. Take every one and use them for your glory. We thank you for interrupting our program and invading us where we needed to be invaded today. See, we've been talking from a sermon series, you can have your best life now. You know, many would think this means mean it and grab it, blab it, and have it, but that's not what it's all about. Your best life now will cost you everything. It will cost you your very will. So you can have your best life now, but it is not cheap. Our theme in these three night meetings is then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear out of nowhere. It will just quickly appear. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and they will overtake us. And the Holy Saint gave me the specific instruction. Behold, I come quickly, and I will is with me to give every man according to his doing. Do we understand that? There isn't a person that isn't going to receive from the Lord, whether it be for judgment or for reward. But all shall be received according to their doing. And he is coming, and there's no doubt about that. I want to acknowledge my host and hostess this evening. I thank God for the angels of this church. I bless God and I'm excited about the great work that he has bestowed in their hands. And I know that he's going to do it. God's going to do it. He's going to use each and every one of us to hold their hands up in the battlefield that they might have the victory. Tonight I'm very excited in my spirit as the worship was going forth. My spirit began to stir up. And the young man is so on point because I'm only going to do what the Spirit of God has instructed me to do. I promise you, great power is here. It's not my power. There's power to heal. There's power to open up the blind eyes, to raise the dead. It's his power. God is not limited by anything. But we gotta make a demand and the anointing. We're only going to get what we're demanding from the Lord. So I just thank God for the young man as he cheered you on, as he pushed you forward to try to get the more. 
God bless him. I thank God for the anointing that is on his life. For praise and to enter in. You just keep doing what you're doing. God has great things in store. You just keep doing, keep plowing, keep memorizing those scriptures. Get closer and closer to him. And when you reach there, you won't even know how you got there. The river just keeps getting higher and higher. You just keep going deeper and deeper until it overtakes you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Young man. Wow. Young man. Young man. I mean you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. There's such a powerful anointing to just shift atmospheric seasons and times. And such a great anointing to just flip things and turn them around. God is so well pleased with the fragrance of your perfume that you're pouring out. And he just wants you to continue to pour it out. He says to you tonight, what is it that you want me to do for you? I heard the Spirit of God say, what do you want me to do for you? And just to prove that I'm not making stuff up, he said two months ago you went through some trials and some tribulation. It was finances that you were dealing with and some relational things that were going on in your life. And just to prove that he said what he said, he wants to give you that for a token. But he is so well pleased, and you can even, you can say it unto me, or you can say it to him in your heart. But God will, he is so pleased with the fruits of your worship. And when he mentioned to me that he was pleased, I knew it had something, he didn't say what it was, had something to do with your music. But this thing that he's looking to do for you has to do with your career. There is a career shift and change that he wants to do for you. Yes. And he's saying to you, whatever it is, whether it be musically, whether it be in your work workspace, whatever it is, he said, you got it. Thank you. Does that make any sense to you? Yes. Yes. Makes a lot of sense. Your heart is encouraged tonight because the Lord has spoken specifically because he wants to be known and he wants them to know that he's pleased. Yes. Keep pushing. Doesn't mean you made it in. Keep pushing to go into the deeper, the higher. You become the instrument of God. Even as Satan himself was the musical master in heaven, and his very body was an instrument. Let your whole self be enveloped by the spirit of the truth. Amazing. He has a way to just flip flop, change his sermon. He kind of changed my sermon last night, and I'm like, Lord, I'm standing up here. I'm going, Lord, are you want me to ship it, switch it, throw it away, throw it up, and see what comes down? Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, he does that. Tonight, I'm asking you know, we talk about revivalism impacting our world, our nation impacting the people around us. But first we have to be impacted. And I'm asking you tonight, what are you willing to pay to have your best life now? You can have your best life now because all that is in the world is not your best life. And all of us are in different places. Every one of us. Some will hear this word and will quickly submit themselves to it. Quickly. Some of us are going to wrestle with it for a while. And then we're going to submit. Some of us will wrestle for a while and even give in to it and then leave it. And some of us will never submit. But 
I want you to know tonight, once again, I bring you good tidings from the throne room of the Lord. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised. I want to acknowledge at this time because I challenged you last night to bring someone who's so glad to see that you listen and you brought someone. You convinced someone to go with you. Is there anyone else who invited someone to come? Is there anyone else? You invited Chris and you forgot Chris? She's so deep in and I forgot about you. It's all good. I'm glad you reminded me that Chris is with you. Chris, I'm so sorry about that. But you're welcome. Thank you so much. We have one more night. And once again, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to ask you to bring someone with you. Ask someone to come. You'll be amazed of people who are waiting for you to just ask. People won't come without an invitation. They're not coming to your house. They're not coming to your father's house unless you invite them to come. And some of you have great, and, and it's not just some of us who are called to do this. This is a job for each and every one of us. Each one bring one, and that's how we're going to make a difference in the kingdom of God. Because, you know, like uh, my brother was saying, you know, he came feeling a little beat up, a little, you know, trained. But we're going to trade our sorrows tonight. There's no theatricals here. Just preaching a pure, unadulterated word of God that is able to save your soul, that is able to change you from the inside out. I'm not, I've not always been what I've appeared to be today, but I can truly say God is working on me, and I desire to be worked on. I have a great desire. You know, it reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. You know, she wants to change, but she doesn't know how. She always tries to do her best, but it doesn't always come out that way. So I'm like Alice in that sense. I want the will of God. I want it for you. I want it for me. And I want it for everyone. So let us get up one more time. The word says, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy, spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Let's get up and rejoice one more time. Thank God for his wonderful presence in this place. Thank you, Lord, for leading us here. Thank you for your people, Lord. Fill them up, Lord God, until they overflow. Fill them up. and wonderfully made in your image and in your likeness, oh Lord. Let them know, Lord God, you are so glad they're here. You love them so much, God. Oh Lord, how much you love us. If we only knew the love that you have for us, God, we would cry ourselves to sleep every night, God. Great is your mercy towards us. Every day you load us up with new benefits. Day by day you visited us, oh Lord God. And tonight we come to the garden alone just to be with you. Just to hear your words so sweetly spoken in our ears tonight. That your words have dominion and power. Let them overcome our minds tonight. Let fear be dissipated, oh Lord God. And let the name of the Lord alone be exalted in this room. Let he alone be exalted. We arrest every spirit in this place.
place that is yeah. like you. Yeah. And we say have your preeminence and your dominion and power in this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus 14, and we're going to go to verse 14. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. When you find that verse, say amen. Amen. I want to tell you a little story. It was about my fourth birthday. It was a few days before my fifth birthday. I was in the backyard playing, picking pea pods in the yard between the rows of dirt where they were all planted. I reached out to the ground and continued to pick up the pea pods and open them up and put them into my little basket. All of a sudden, something covered up my mouth, my eyes, and my face. And some smelled something that smelled different. And I felt myself slipping into a sleep. Before I knew it, someone had grabbed me. And they were running and running and running. As they ran, the branches, they hit my face. Things pulled at my hair. I was now hanging upside down, being held only by my feet, as this person was running with me. Through the darkness, I fell asleep again. By the time I came through again, it was very dark. And the person put me down, and I could hear the noises. And they put me down very abruptly and continued to run. I waited there, and I waited there. The greatest fear in my life had clenched my heart. I didn't know who it was. I was afraid of them, but yet I needed them to come back. I, needed, I waited, hoping my mom would come and to rescue me, but she never came. I waited until night came, and then the next day came, and nothing. The darkness was so fearful. All the animals, as the night fell and got darker and darker, I could hear the sound of the monkeys, the gorillas, the lions. I could hear every sound of crickets, even from the smallest little thing. I heard every sound, and the fear was deafening. The fear was loud, that it put me to sleep. The next morning, when I woke, there were monkeys in the branches. They were capuchin monkeys, and they shook the trees in the jungle. They shook the trees. And it made me afraid, but I sat there. There was nowhere to go. There was no one to cry for. No one came for me. No, I knew nothing to do but sit there and wait. And I waited, and I waited. One day, one of the monkeys got close to me, and he came by and he shot me, and he ran away. It was a fearful situation, but it was better than nothing. They came and they go, went, and I just watched them. Everything they did, I began to do it for survival. They broke the nuts, so I broke the nuts. When they went away and they went and they picked fruits, sometimes they would have so much that some would drop to the ground. And I would eat them. I did everything they did. Monkey see, monkey do. That was my survival method that I might live. Another day came by where I became very, very ill. 
and one of the older monkeys came by. And he picked me up and took me into this river of water. And he dumped me and he dumped me until I threw up and it got better. That was the beginning of my new family. They started to come closer and closer. And one day they started to groom me. Oh, you couldn't believe the joy of that grooming, to feel the touch of something that was some, somewhat human. At this point, years had gone by and I began to forget how to, you know, how to speak. And I would start to make the sounds that they made. I'd crawl the trees like they crawl the trees. And time went on and on. One day, as I was in a tree, a couple came by. There was a man and a woman. And I was amazed that they looked like me. And something told me that I can reveal myself to them. And I did. And they put me in the back of their truck. They were hunters. And they put me in the back of their truck and took me away. I was so happy that now I was going to have a normal life. But they took me to a brothel and sold me. I didn't know at the time that that was, was what was going on. But now that I look back and I saw the exchange of money, I understood. That started my greatest nightmare. Because the woman there hated children. She had many children there, and she tortured them, and she tormented them. Truly, it was the greatest nightmare. But one day, I escaped, and I lived on the streets in South America for two years. Just survival, beer survival, eating where I can, sleeping where I can, so I can make it. This is the story, it is a true story, of Marina Chapman, the girl with no name. I came tonight to tell you, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are, what they have been, or where you are tonight. God has a plan for your life. If we think about this story, it brings us back to another story in the Bible. It is the story of the children of Israel. The time had come for God to bring them out of slavery and to set them free. And just like Marina, they found themselves in a place where they were locked in with no way out. Some of you are broken tonight because someone took you into the jungle. Some of us even wandered into the jungle. We did it ourselves. But the children of Israel found themselves in the wilderness. But the beauty of the story of the children of Israel is that God of Israel was with them. I ask you to go with me to Exodus, the 14th chapter, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Say unto the children of Israel that they turn and they can't be poor. Fire. Did you find me? I am. I actually started reading from another verse from the uh, chapter 14, verse 1. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, unto the children, Say unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pihiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon. Before it shall, shall he encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, just like Marina was in the wilderness had shut them in and there was no way out. 
Guys, those of you who are distracted with phones, I really need you to pay attention because this is a distraction to me. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his souls that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. And it was told unto the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servant was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt, Egypt and captains over every one of them. But the Egyptian pursued after them all the horses in the chariot of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Piha Haroth before Baal's the bond. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel left up, lift up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Before there were no, is it because there were no graves in Egypt that thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? See, sometimes when we are in the wilderness, we have a tendency to start accusing God. We forget that. See, God said unto Moses to lead the children in a certain direction because of war that was going on. He said, at least they see the war and they repent that they have decided to take this journey and decide to go back. So God always had a plan. Yeah. I came to let you know tonight that God has a plan for your life, designed, tailor-made, just for you. See, we have a tendency to think that the plan is all about us. But in all reality, it's all about him. Because he said that Pharaoh and all of Egypt might know who I am that I might get the glory and the honor over Pharaoh. Yeah. So God had a plan. He specifically led them in a place that they would be locked in and have no way out. And they would have to stretch forth their faith and to believe God for what they're going through in order to get through what they were going through. See, God has a tendency to look way deeper within. He sees the need of your heart. He knows the plan that he has for you from the foundation of the earth. And in order for him to get you from your there to here, he has to go into your heart and look into your heart and begin to do heart surgery and to deal with the things that are in your heart and they're something things that we've got our hands on that we're not going to let go until the fire comes under our feet. It is only then and only then when we allow God to have his way in our space. We have to find ourselves deep into the jungle, in the darkness, in the greatest fear of our life before we say, not my way, God, not my will, but God be done in my life. So sometimes the rug has to be pulled from under us. And sometimes we have to be moved from one place to another place. We have to be chased by our enemies. We have to be cursed. We have to be cast out. We have to be dejected and rejected before we would allow God to have his way in our lives. I came to tell somebody today it's as easy to just Submit unto God. Submit yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord, and He shall do a great work with you in His time. Because He knows the plan that He has for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, you know, man, do me a favor, bring that Bible to me, please. He knows the plan. See, the children of Israel 
were in Egypt. And sometimes when the heat comes, we would much rather deal with captivity. We would much rather to have someone just do us any kind of way, you know, beat me, but just let me come home tonight. You could just keep me, but just let me be here. Sometimes we just need a little bit of love, and we don't care where we get it, and even if it's just for the melon and the garlic and the, garlic and the different things that they offer them, they were willing to be enslaved. But God has another plan for us. There is, and you know, when you come out in the first part, you're like so exuberant, so excited that God came in and he brought you out. You're so excited that newness, that new love, that new engagement. Oh, Lord, you're so in love with him. You're so on fire for him because the love is new. He rescued me out of darkness and he brought me into his marvelous life. I don't have to deal with X, Y, and Z because he cleaned me up. But there comes a time when, the, you know, after you've been in this love relationship for a while, he said, honey, we're about to go to another level. We're about to go somewhere else. And all of a sudden it begins to shake. The ground under your feet begins to move. You start to slip and slide. And the next thing you know, you find yourself down and out. And you're saying, oh God, I did not sign up for all of this. But I came to tell you know, tonight that that is part of the encounter. It is part of the love dance. It's part of the woe. It's part of the change. That it is not all about you, but all about him. He called you to be his vessel. He called anointed one. You are his chosen, his beloved and he loves you with an everlasting love that he will not leave you the way you came in. Yeah. Alright. Yes, Alright. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Go! See, once we escape, mm -hmm. that's the good part. We have great expectations yeah. of him. We expect it to be the honeymoon is all the way oh, through. We expect to keep on floating, oh God. Whoa. When I first met him, oh, what a flow. What a love story. But when we find ourselves entangled, uh -huh. when the ropes are back around our neck, because we went somewhere we shouldn't have gone, we said something we shouldn't have been. We did not listen when he said turn left, we decided yeah. to turn right. We decided to do it my way. Yeah. And there's a price to pay. I need to tell you tonight, when you find yourself in this encounter, God is trying to do something in your life. Something miraculous, something to change you, something to shake some things loose in you. And that's the time to say, Lord, I am sorry. That's not the time to curse God and die. Because there are some encounters in this life. Because, you know, when, when um, Daniel encountered God and put him in the lion's den, Moses went to do the Lord's bidding, but yet the Spirit of God met him in the way and was going to kill him. These encounters is to get a hold of your heart because he loves you so very much that he would not leave you the way you are. Because he searched so much deeper within. And he wants your heart. He wants your heart of worship. He wants your heart of praise. He wants your heart of thanksgiving. And see, when we find ourselves in these deep, deep places, that's the thing furthest away from us. All we want to do is say, the woman that you gave me, you did it, God. You told me to do this. And yet, in every one of our decisions, we don't seek after God. We don't seek him. We don't ask for his counsel. We don't search for him. We don't seek after the Lord while he can be found. We do whatever we want to do. And the next thing you know, we're in trouble. We're going down for the last count. Sending out an SOS. Tore from the floor. Up. Lord help me. Jesus. And all of a 
of a sudden we're not love anymore. We don't want to witness anymore. We don't want to come to church anymore. He searched so much deeper within. Oh, yes, love. I heard the I heard the song singer say tonight. He's never lost a battle. He never intended to lose a battle. I came to let you know tonight. God is as close as your last breath. Yes. No one needs to go down to hell mm -hmm. to get him. No one needs to descend, uh, ascend to heaven or descend to hell. He is as close as your next breath. Mm -hmm. There's an experience that I've had lately that just boggles my mind. A family member of mine passed. And days before the Lord would show me the entire event and everything that happened, how is it possible, God, that we as physical beings in this earthly tabernacle, in this earthly body, can look into the future? How can you come and talk to me and walk with me and come and visit me in the, in the midnight hour and wait? rings and, and my innermost being God and test me and see what is in me in the midnight hour. Hey. How do you do that God? How is that possible? I want you to know tonight what an awesome mighty God you serve. Hey. He is in competition hey. with no one. Hey. You don't have to worry about your enemies because he's going to make your enemies your footstool. Yeah, yeah. And he said that he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. When you go through the test, bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Do yeah. not curse him. Yeah. Do not question God. He knows everything. That's right. Through that incident, I could see that the hand of God organizes everything, every step of your life, even before he takes you. He
of every single thing in your life. Sometimes he has to break us to make us. But we don't want to break him. We don't want to shake him. But he says, don't cry out to me. You have everything you need. I've given you everything that pertains unto life and everything that pertains unto godliness. He is your maker tonight. And tonight I want to say to you, there's a great work to be done. According to Isaiah, the 11th, the 58th, Isaiah 58, the 11th verse, it says, 11, 12 verse, I want to start with the 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breaches and the restorer of the paths to dwell in. If you look all around you tonight, are there places that need to be restored? Ooh, come on, come are, there, are there broken places that yeah. need to be built up? Amen. God wants to use you as a building foundation, yeah. a building block. Yeah. I pray when we leave these meetings that it won't go back to seem old, oh, seem old. Oh. I remember one night an evangelist came to my church. And the beauty of what he said is lay yourself, your hand on yourself. Yeah. Whatever anointing you have in you, you know what you're working with. Come on now, come on. To be able to stir something up in you. Yeah. I believe in my anointing. I laid my hand on myself. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I'm impregnated with vision. Come on. I'm impregnated with evangelism. Yeah. I went and got myself some tracks. I went to the mall and I stood in front of the mall and everyone, there was a little, little uh, space where the door goes into the back of the theater uh -huh. to the mall uh -huh. and that was my office. I'll uh -huh. tell you on the side. And I saw great miracles yes. in that place. Oh. I tell you, the people in the street will receive the word of God before the people in the church. Yes, they will yes. receive the miracle. I saw demons leave. Yes. I saw some great works being done. I saw people who were there just to sneak into the back door. <laughs> Stand by and talk to me for a little bit. <laughs> Praise God. But God's wanting to stir something up. And this ain't going to be done with theatrical. It's either you're going to eat or you're going to starve. It's either you're going to open up your mouth wide and he's going to fill it. You're going to open it up wide and he's going to fill it or you're going to starve. It's time to put away some milk and baby food and all that stuff and start eating some real meat. Because God has called you to a great work. And he sent me with a great word to empower you, to put in you, to deposit in you what is necessary for the work to get going. There is no telling what God will do or we know too hard for our God. But see, the minute you step out on the water, and then you see you starting to fall, you're gripped with fear. And that's why the songs tonight that came out was, I will, be, I will not be afraid. Most of the singing that we did tonight was about who he is and how I will not be afraid. The Bible verses that I have for you are about not being afraid. Don't be afraid. No. Look unto him. It's the Father's good will to give you the kingdom. He wants to give you the kingdom and the keys to the kingdom. But it, can you imagine what God can do with a surrendered soul? Surrender everything for him. Now there's a process. I'm not saying, you know, uh, you know last night you couldn't jump up and say, Send me, Lord, doesn't mean you're not going. Come on. Doesn't mean he has not sent you. Yeah. That means you're in your process and you recognize where you are and you're not sure. Uh -huh. But doesn't mean you're not going. Come on. Doesn't mean you're not on your way. Right. Doesn't mean God isn't going to use you. Right. God likes what you're doing right now. You yeah. put your hand to the plow and you say you're not turning back. Yeah. He's well pleased with that. He will not reject your sacrifice.
sacrifice. No, no, no. He will not reject what you're doing for him. Come on. But he's letting you know you don't have to stand here crying, what do I do, Lord? What am I going to do? How am I going to get this done? He's God. We've got to walk with God hand in hand. There are some things that he has to do. There are some things that we have to do. It's an even exchange. Yeah. And that's why he can say little is much when God is in it. That's Bible. So it, it takes two. It takes two. You and him. Hand in hand. They could not come out of Egypt without him. He was the great power. He used Moses' hand. Right? But whose hand was really raised up? It was the right hand of power. That was able to humble Pharaoh and his entire household with his miracles, his signs, and his wonders. He sent the locusts and just covered the entire ground. Then he sent a wind and blew them all away. Then he sent another wind to open the Red Sea. Is there anything too hard for my God? No. No. So, God has a work. He's calling you tonight to be a repairer of the breaches. Those that have been broken down to build it up again. This neighborhood has been broken down and this is a beacon of light, a lighthouse shining in the darkness. Yeah. The light went out for a moment. But God wants to send a light. To send a glorious light of the gospel. There are people in this neighborhood that need to know about Jesus. That need to have their sins forgiven. That need to be on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said when you do this. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. This is what he'll do for you. And make far, make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden. A watered garden will bring forth fruit in and out of season. And like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Anybody feel that tonight? Feeling that tonight? I want you all to come up. I'm going to praise God a little bit. Come on up. Everybody come up. Hallelujah. Everybody come on up. Come on up. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Let's enter into his presence right now. Know that